Hi everyone, following on from the re review of the PowerKid EQ20 Mini, big focus was on how better performance you can get out of the console by updating it to the latest custom firmware. So I thought with this in mind, we'll do a quick run through how to get your PowerKid EQ20 updated to the latest custom firmware. Thankfully it's not super complicated to do, you just need to make sure that you have a few things installed and downloaded before you start. I include all the links in the video description, but in terms of programs you'll need Belina Mitcher, 7-Zip and DiscGenius installed as well as the latest version of the custom firmware, PlayStation emulator and BIOS downloaded. Included some footage from the stock firmware Bloody War 2 as optimizers I can make it using the stock firmware, so we've got something to compare a bit to at the end. Okay, first of all, make sure you've got the latest version of the custom firmware downloaded from the GitHub page. You just need to make sure you download it from the Pocket Go and Power Kitty section. There's a note to say the PowerKiddy Q20 mini firmware should work, but without any guarantees. So with that in mind, we just need to make sure that we grab the right PowerKiddy firmware. Firmware comes compressed in a 7-zip file, so we just have to extract the firmware image using 7-zip and wait for it to extract. Next, we'll want to use Bellina Etcher to flash a microSD card with our custom firmware. So make sure you've got the microSD card inserted on your computer. It's always best to use a name brand if you can for stability and peace of mind. But just select the image you have extracted in the last step. Select your microSD card and hit flash. Bellina Etcher will automatically dismount your microSD once it's finished. So just remove it and add it back to your computer before continuing on. Custom firmware will only flash to the memory size it needs, so we need to use Disk Genius to use all the free memory left on the microSD card. To do this, highlight the section called Main under your microSD card, right-click on it and select Extend Partition. It will automatically assume you want to use whatever space is left on the card, so you can safely click Start. You can also use Disk Genius to add games to the microSD card, as you won't be able to see the main partition within File Explorer. So open up the main partition within Disk Genius, then the ROMs folder, and then the folder you'd like to add games in. In this case, we're going to add Bloody Roar 2, so I'm selecting the PS1 folder, then right click in the white space to the right and select Copy Files to Current Partition. Select the files you'd like to copy over, and then you're away. Before we unmount the microSD card, we can also use Disk Genius to update the PlayStation emulator. To do this, open up the main partition, select the Imuse folder, and then the PCSX underscore rearmed folder. Right click in the right window pane, select Copy Files to the current partition, and select the PCSX file you've downloaded. You can do the same to add the BIOS to the BIOS folder here, and you're safe to unmount the microSD card from the computer once all the files have turned some fired. So placing the micro SD card into the PowerKid EQ20, you can see if it's been a success straight away as you'll get a very cool PowerKid Game Boy like opening screen and the custom firmware will boot. You can use the shoulder buttons and directional pads to navigate around. So let's select the PlayStation emulator and boot straight into Bloody War 2.
It's worth mentioning you can click on the left option buttons to open up the emulator functions, where you can add frame skip if the game needs it, like this one, and select the bars the game will use. Once you've tweaked as necessary, you can select save on the global or game level. So there we have it, using the custom firmware on the PAL PDQ20. I hope this has been useful. I'll leave you with a bit of gameplay, but thank you so much for watching.